it's Julie Davison from juliedavison.com. Welcome to Thursday Night Stamp Therapy. It is Thursday, March 7th, and I'm so excited that you are joining me. Although I do have to be honest, <laughs> I'm not prepared. I'm feeling kind of blah this week, and so I'm not sure how this is going to go. We're going to... We're going to stamp a little bit and see if we can turn this mood around. Tell me how you guys are tonight. Um, I uh, I think I've mentioned it before in my videos that I follow this reality TV show. And um, the the family in that show suffered a, um, a loss of one of the children this week. And so it's rattled me more than I expected it would. I think because just I'm a mother. And kids aren't supposed to go soon or than parents. <laughs> um, anyway, I've got some fun things. I was going to show you some online exclusives today, but then I was looking at the website and um, there's a lot of things that are not currently available. Our online exclusives just launched on Tuesday and we've got so many amazing things. I know you guys are just so excited about all these things. I knew that you would be. Um, and um, so just an update, if you haven't placed an order, many of you have, and thank you for that. Um, the Simply Zinnia stamp set is currently unavailable, but it will be back. Uh, I think the date on that I just checked was March 25th, and those beautiful sequins, April 29th, they're coming back. Uh, I know many of you are wanting that Magnolia Mood, and that stamp set will be back in stock the 18th. It's a good thing that it's the stamp sets and not the dies, because all of our stamp sets are manufactured in Kanab, Utah. I've been to the plant. I've seen it. It's kind of amazing. Um, Sweetly Scripted is also currently not available. TBD. Um, these are the most popular right out of the gate. So if you're looking for those, they're coming back, I promise. And those little cute dies that I've shared with you before. Those are currently on back order until March 25th as well. And currently back ordered items cannot be added to an order. So you just have to wait for them to come back in stock. So that was a lot of the things <laughs> from online exclusives. So I am going to focus on some other things tonight. Um, although mom and I are scheduled to share projects using the Simply Zinnia and the Flowering Zinnia Suite this weekend. So be sure to tune in on Sunday, um, Sunday, March 10th. We've got um, some fun projects in store for you. So if you're loving these bright colors, um, then check back on Sunday. We'll definitely be playing with that then. And speaking of Sunday, it is the last day on Sunday to um, to subscribe for the March Paper Pumpkin Kit. It's called Memorable Meadows, and it is very much influenced by this Meandering Meadow Designer Paper, which was an online exclusive back in November. This kit is celebrating a, a paper pumpkin anniversary and so there is a bonus free stamp set. That's the whole free stamp set right there. It looks really cool. In fact, here is a card made with that bonus stamp set. It's like a two-step set with the flowers. This one is gorgeous and an extra stamp set for free. Now, if you're loving the vibe of this kit, you want to make sure you get subscribed by um, Sunday, March 10th in order to get this kit. Um, I think it's like $23.50 or something like that plus tax. Um, I have a prepaid subscription, so I honestly don't pay attention to the monthly price but I did get myself an extra kit because I'm really excited about this one and um and the um and the extra stamp set is just icing on the cake um oh oh no Heather oh I'm just seeing your news in the chat I am sending you the biggest hugs oh my goodness gracious um Heather dealing with the loss of her grandson. Um, did I read that right? Um, I gotta scroll back up here. Oh my goodness. Um, oh, Heather, I'm so, so sorry. Um, yeah, it's just not right. It's just not right when, um, when kids go so young. Uh, it just hurts my heart. Um, okay, so let's, let's stamp, let's make ourselves feel better with some paper crafting, um, therapy tonight. And I know that we all know people who are hurting, so let's send cards. 
let's send cards this week and spread joy um, the way we know how through our handmade cards. Speaking of which, let me share some beautiful cards with you. We're going to start with our mail call. I usually share it for the end of the video, but um, we're going to we're going to dig in tonight. So um, the first bit of cards um, are these here. Um, this is so much fun. I just love my Drupal and Stampers team. We um, do a one for one swap every couple months or every quarter or so. And um, it's it's just a lot of fun to share cards and it's in a, a small number. It's a, it's a lot like the great big card swap, except um, everyone just sends the cards directly to each other and I let people choose between one and five cards. So it's like a great way to like ease into swapping without a huge commitment because there's a lot of um, hobby demonstrators on my team who um, just enjoy the discount and shop for themselves. And so um, it's so fun to see. So the theme for our swap this time was the um, January through April mini catalog. And so it was so great to get these beautiful samples. So let me, I'm gonna show you these from the team members first. This one is from Jill Pace. I love this one. She used that new stamp set. Oh, I, I forgot the name of it already. Uh, Planted Paradise. This is a, um, reversible stamp set I think um, from the mini catalog and it was one that we got as a free gift at on stage in November and I'm so excited to be headed to on stage um, this next week in fact I'm leaving on Tuesday I'll be gone Tuesday to Tuesday, but the conference is Thursday, Friday, Saturday next week, the 14th through the 16th, which I've just realized I've got to pre-record a video for you guys because I will not be able to be live um, next Thursday night. I'll be participating in a special class um, at on stage, which I'm really excited about because we get some sneak peek products from the new mini catalog. And I think, I think maybe some in color. Do we get some in colors? I don't know. We get some kind of special card stock, but for sure we get to see the new in colors and it's just going to be so amazing. I can't wait. Um, so this is reminding me of that because this stamp set, the Planted Paradise, was one that demonstrators who attended on stage in November got to choose for free. And so I, um, I ponder and I wonder what kind of goodies we're going to get next week. Um, it's going to be so much fun. Um, all right, our next card is from Melody Lampert, and she used the um, Thoughtful Expressions. Gosh, I love this one. It has the beautiful dyes, uh, the labels, and there's flowers and the hummingbird. I just love the way she colored this one. It's so beautiful with all the different colors. Um, I'm trying to even look at all the colors in there. She's got some blueberry bushel and azure afternoon, lemon lime twist, berry burst, and I want to say a little bit of like light shaded spruce in there. Um, it's just so gorgeous. You're in my thoughts today. What a perfect card, I think, to send to anyone that you're thinking of. Um, I love this one too with the bright colors. This one's from Terry Biggs, and this is such a fun fold with the Beach Day um, stamp set and bundle. I think that's the name of this one. Isn't that fun? I'm really excited to get a sample with this one because I didn't choose this bundle from the mini catalog. It's still available, of course. The lighter than air designer paper. What a fun fold too. I really like that. Um, and these colors right from the designer paper, Flirty Flamingo, Azure Afternoon, and some Lemon Lolly. I think that is just such a great combination together. I'm really loving that. The next card is from Ali Martinez with the, oh gosh, that cute little bee, Be My Valentine. I love these, um, these dyes too. We just looked it up last time. <laughs> um, something basics. Oh, I'm sure you guys know it. It's such a great die set. I need to get that one out and use it again. Love the bright colors here. Um, Coastal Cabana with some Daffodil Delight in that cute little bee. How about this one from April Booth? I love this with the Easter eggs. Um, I have been eyeing this bundle and keep telling myself I don't need it. Um, oh, Nested Essentials. That might be it, Susan. Thank you. <laughs> Um, this one's just so cute. Got some images and then the detailed dies in that Easter egg bundle. So adorable. April has sent a few cards. Um, I think some for the great big card swap that also use those dies in that bundle. So great. Here's one from Barbara McHouston who, um, used the flight and airy designer paper to make a telescoping card. And I actually shared this card during our great big card swap and I totally forgot. 
Um, uh, not totally forgot. I messed up and didn't realize that it was for our team swap. So I shared it there. And so I've already talked about it, <laughs> but, uh, that was such a fun card. I was happy, um, to see that one from Barbara. Thank you. Um, and then this one from, uh, Carmen Melendez. And I did a sample, or I did a version of this on Sunday. Um, after being, uh, inspired by Carmen, I created this version of this little flat fold card using the new latte suite. Have you seen this video? Sunday stamping from March 3rd. If you haven't seen it, I'll try to link it up in the video description for you. I love it. Carmen's version inspired me. She used the perennial lavender, um, designer paper and the painted lavender, um, bundle. I love that one. Those dies are back in stock, by the way, if you've been waiting. Here's one from Kathy Groovy using the same suite. She actually cased this one from the catalog. And I think I copied what this same card and, and made it too in another video. Uh, I love the layout with the postage, perennial postage, um, dies and the um, oh, these butterflies are just amazing. Um, the laser cut butterflies and she did a little sponging on there. Such a great card from Kathy. And then uh, same suite here. This one is Kimberly Kane. And this ribbon from the annual catalog goes so perfectly. I love that Lost Lagoon with a little bit of gold in there. I can't thank you enough. So, so pretty. And I love the little banner on the inside. A little bit of that same paper here. This one's from Jennifer McLaughlin and this new embossing folder. God is good indeed. I love the colors here. The crumb cake with that Highland Heather. So pretty. Another one. This one's from Margot Richardson using the same suite. She's got the, the painted posy embossing folder here with the painted lavender um, stamps and dies. And Thinking of You comes from the layered leaves uh, stamp set in the annual catalog that coordinates with the, <laughs> the bow punch. <laughs> I trap myself. I do it to myself. I love that one so much from Margo. Oh my gosh, look at this one from um, Maria um, Debi. She used that um, uh, uh, oh, abundant beauty, enduring beauty. Oh, what is it? Uh, it has coordinating masks and a steam set. And so she did the steam set in the background and the masks in the foreground. Holy smokes, that's gorgeous. Yes. So pretty. Oh my gosh. I kind of feel like maybe we just need to play with those tonight. We'll see. We'll see what we're going to do. <laughs> Our next one is from Kathy Bradley. This is actually from the annual catalog, but I just love this card. She used packing tape on the, um, the hourglass to, I don't know how well that comes through on camera. So pretty it would to have that shine on there and that effect on the hourglass. Time to celebrate. Happy birthday. Just love that. Kathy always does beautiful cards. And our last one from Lori Query, a little easel card using that rock and roll suite. The black and white designer paper is so fun with a pop of red. And this is a um, cut out from the paper that shows the embossed image underneath. A little die cut down here too with the guitar, guitar pick. Um, oh my gosh, aren't these cards just so fun? These are all the cards that I received from our team. Uh, one for one swap. Thank you to everyone who swapped with me. I really had so much fun. I hope you guys all enjoyed your cards. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to have time to make swap cards for on stage. It's always one of my favorite parts of going to a Stampin' Up! event is swapping. If you are going to on stage, tell me, are you bringing swaps? I want to make sure that I bring swaps to share with all of you. So um, we'll see if I've got some time to make the cards. I have so much to do before we leave, including I need to make a video with our uh, great big card swap for Tuesday. I will be, um, I will already be in Texas on Tuesday. So I, I will pre-record that great big card swap video to share with you. Speaking of the great big card swap, I have a couple doubles to share with you from our last video. This one is from Virginia Smith with the great big swallowtail. Oh my gosh, isn't that gorgeous? The way she um, die cut some of those, did some paper piecing to create the layers and the dimension on that butterfly. So pretty. Butterfly Bijou is the designer paper in the background and decorated on the inside too. So beautifully. 
I love that, Virginia. Thank you for the extra one. Uh, another double card here from Myrna Hernandez. She created this um, tri-fold slimline card with a playing in the rain designer paper. Oh, I loved this card design too. The theme was big last month for um, February. And so these cards definitely fit the bill. Nancy Bridges sent um, this beautiful note card uh, with, along with her card. This is from um, her friend, she said, has painted this Jean Smith um, so beautiful um, I've got to share that front again with you so this is um, based on a painting by Jean just absolutely beautiful Th Nancy thank you so much for um, for sharing that it's always so amazing to see um, artwork and reproduced and shared this way um, I have several artists in my family and gosh I just love it I can see their art being on note cards someday I think that's really awesome uh, Marie's asking about how did she do the big butterfly? Um, so essentially she stamped that butterfly um, three or four times and then, um, you know, cut it out and then cut out another part of it and put that on top with Stampin' Dimensionals and then cut out another part and put that on with Stampin' Dimensionals. Uh, I forget what you call this technique. I want to say paper 12, but I think that is a different technique with the curling of the paper. Um, just absolutely beautiful, that technique. So each one of these layers has stamp and dimensionals to kind of give it that dimension. Um, and it's just stamped and cut from, um, different pieces of paper and all layered on top of each other. Just gorgeous. Um, looks like I, I, it looks like I'm going to have to bring some swaps so I can swap with Tony and with Catherine too. Um, I know it is crazy kind of how many swaps some people bring. Oh, I remember going to convention years ago and um, one of my team members brought like 400 cards to swap. Oh, that is just, I can't imagine making that many. And then um, bringing them there and bringing them home. And then what do you do with 400 cards? Like that's a lot of cards. Um our next card is from Sandy Coy Emmering. Sandy, thank you so much for this one. A little Valentine's Day card. I'm actually behind in sharing my cards, and so there are several Valentine cards in here. Um, and I apologize for not sharing them sooner. I, I feel like it's just been a little while since we've done that. So, Sandy, thank you so much for that Valentine card. Here's one from Trina Hillegas. Um, love this cute layout with the embossing folder and the punched heart. I just thought this was so cute. Thank you so much for thinking of me um, for Valentine's Day and also to Diane Gorski who sent me this Valentine's Day card using that gorgeous meandering meadow designer paper. Love the sort of non-traditional colors and theme with the purple. I think it's just lovely. Um, I got a few cards for um, sympathy. My aunt passed away um, and so thank you so much for thinking of me and, and praying for our family. Alita Williams sent this one. Um, with a rainbow of happiness stamp set. You know, I have some of these kits. This was from one of my classes. I have some of these kits left over and um, I plan to post some of these past kits that I have extras of on my website at juliedavison.com slash kits. Right now you'll find the Jungle Pals kit there and the Be Mine kit there. Um, and just watch that page because I'll have some more um, kits posted as I kind of get organized and get them pulled out and counted. But I know for sure that I've got um, these card kits here. They don't include the stamped images, so you'd need to have the stamp set and dies. Although I might have an extra one of these bundles. Alita, thank you for your kind words and your beautiful card. This one as well, sympathy card from Sherry um, Road. Thank you so much, Sherry, for this one. I just love this um, beautiful paper and the vellum um, leaves from the bow punch <laughs> and the little flowers it's just so lovely and so perfect wishing I could heal your heart I think that's just such a perfect sentiment that I wish for so many um and then I've got some celebratory cards. This one is from Shannon West, um, a DDM at the home office from Stampin' Up! who sent me this card to celebrate my earning the incentive trip a couple months ago. So excited to be going to Disney in 2025, but before then I'll be going to Mexico this year, uh, the end of April. In fact, <laughs> we will be gone for the launch of the annual catalog. That's a crazy timing, but I'm so looking forward to that trip um, with my husband, Jim. It's going to be so much fun. Thank you, Shannon, for your card. Um, and also this one, I love this from Masako. She sent me this fun, um, fun little card. It's got a um, fun fold. So this is the free as a bird. We were just talking about this suite the other day during our great big card swap video. And um, so this one has kind of a fun little like pop up. 
Um, and I have made this card before with a pop up like this way, but I kind of like it horizontal. So maybe we will have to try and make this card tonight. That might be a fun one. Um, a fun one to create. So I'm going to, I'm going to put this one on, uh, on the top and maybe we'll be inspired. But before we get to that, um, I wanted to make a card. Um, I, I had a special request, um, for the envelope fold card. And this is one that I shared in a private class. And so I didn't have a public tutorial for it. Um, it was part of my ornate garden class back in, um, October. When did, when did we do that? I think it was October. And um, and so I, I thought I would, I would make another version of that card. And so I've got the measurements here and I started pulling out paper and I just didn't get, um, I just didn't get very far. And unfortunately I already sent away my sample. So it's going to be a surprise if you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, but the card does have kind of a, um, a, a flap. Um, that is like this in the front. And then there's going to be another designer paper that has um, two, two panels on the bottom. So I need your help in deciding um, which patterns to use. I'm using the lighter than air designer paper, which is so cute with the hot air balloons, stamp set and dies. But of course you can use um, any stamp set with these papers. They're just so fun for spring and Easter. They have such an Easter vibe to me. I just love it. So, um, all right. So I need some help picking out the pattern. So the first thing we need is the flap and we're going to have to fold it diagonally. And so I really love like this one, but we can't fold that diagonally because then our hot air balloons are sideways. Um, it could be the bottom paper if we wanted it to be, and then we'd have a flap like on top. Um, so that is an option. Or we do, um, or we have polka dots or stripes, which would turn into, well, the the. The, the horizontal, the diagonal stripes would turn into then um, vertical stripes if we did a horizontal foot. That's kind of interesting. Um, or we could do the polka dots. So you guys tell me what you think in the comments here. Um, which of these papers do you um, do you think maybe we should use for the um, for um, for the top part? And then we have to then choose a, um, a bottom part. <laughs> um, well, let's see. Susan says the green. Are you thinking this green? I do like that one. It's got some polka dots, but, um, uh, let's see, Susan. Oh yeah. This, this one with the polka dots. That's what you're saying. Jennifer likes the stripes, sharing the dots. Um, Robin says the stripes too. Um, now, if we do whichever one we do for the top, do we want to do the hot air balloons on the bottom panels? It's kind of like a gatefold card. Um, so it would be something like that or like that. Or do we want to do something different and more subtle? For example, we could do a yellow. Um, this is too many choices. <laughs> doing before I went live and I was just like I don't know I don't know what to do and so here we are <laughs> this is the story of my life when I'm creating um sometimes I just can't make up my mind and I just get so frozen with like um indecision <laughs> yes decision fatigue exactly I am in I am in that mode, I feel like. This is pretty. I kind of like that with the stripes and the blue. Oh, that's the same paper, just the other side. <laughs> um, uh, I'm seeing some stripes, stripes, dots. Um, I, I think I like the stripes as well. Um, okay, so if we do the stripes, do we want to do... Um, that's like almost too much pattern, I think, right? Uh, do we like a yellow or the blue or the um, hot air balloons? Okay, so stripes on top and then one, two, three. Blue, yellow, hot air balloons. I'm seeing several of you say with the blue. It does look so sharp, doesn't it? Okay. I <laughs> Oh, Jennifer says balloons. 
Um, stripes and balloons. Stripes and blue. I know you cannot go wrong. I think they're all just so great. Um, I think we've eliminated the yellow. I'm not seeing any yellows. I'm seeing a lot of um, stripes and I'm seeing a lot of um, hot air balloons. Um, I'm leaning towards the blue and then we are going to, because this kind of like the, the stripes overpower, I think the balloons a little bit. Let's go with the blue. We'll stamp a balloon to put on top and it's going to be fabulous. All right, so we need some cardstock, and we're actually gonna have like two components to the card base on this card. Um, sorry, while I'm turning around, I just thought I would not talk so that my voice wouldn't fade. All right, we're gonna use some thick white for the gatefold part, and I think some Azure Afternoon for um, the base. So I am loving that combination. So let's get out our paper trimmer. I've got the measurements for you and I'm going to also um, put them in the video description as well. So if you want to remake this card at home, you can um, just grab those measurements from there. So we've got our six by six designer paper. That's gonna be this one. And we wanna do this, we wanna fold diagonally in half and I'm just gonna give it a little score just to help us. And so that's going to go just just a really light score. You can you don't have to score it. You can just fold it and use a bone folder, but I really want to make sure. I feel like sometimes it's hard to go straight when you have a diagonal fold like this. So I I did the bone the the, the scoring. I feel good about that. I'm just going to use the bone folder to get a good crease. So this one is going to get scored like that. We actually need to do a little cutting on this one as well. Um well, I think some scoring. Okay. First, let's do our other cutting, and then I have to I actually have to pull up the directions. I should have just printed. <laughs> I should have printed the directions. Okay, I don't know. I thought I deleted that wall. Okay, anyway, the white cardstock is going to be four inches, and again, this is thick white cardstock. Um, I guess you could use regular. You know what? Nope, I'm gonna use thick. <laughs> I was really debating. You could go either way because it, it's layered on another piece, but I still do want it to be, um, I want it to like feel substantial and not, not be too flippity floppity. Okay, four inches by 10 and a half. So I did four, now I'm going 10 and a half and I've got to do um, a score line on this, but first we need to get the right measurement. Okay. So this one is four by 10 and a half, and then we're gonna score it two and five eighths inch. So I'm gonna just scoot it back here, two and five eighths inch, and score that. Um, it was Alita Williams who shared some of these um, envelope flap cards in the um, Share and Connect group on Facebook. So if you saw Alita's cards, this is how she um, this is how she did them. Okay, so we've got the white cardstock, and then the blue cardstock is going to be um, four and a quarter by five and a half. So that's just like a quarter sheet of cardstock. Um, easy, easy peasy. It's just going to kind of be a layer for our card base. You'll see as it comes together. Uh, for this designer paper, we need two pieces that are two and three eighths inch by three and three quarters. So first I'm gonna cut the three and three quarters, and then I'm gonna cut the two and three eighths inch. And so the half inch, the, the three eighths inch is like the bigger tick in between one quarter and one half. Tick, that's the technical term. <laughs> Oh, what did I say? Two and three eighths inch. That's right. So two of those pieces. And these are going to be for the panels of that gatefold card. Okay. Oh, and then we need a piece for the inside. This is going to be um, just, you know what? Actually, we don't need it because our, our, um, what is this? <laughs> the card base, the gatefold card is already white. So we don't need another white layer. But if you had a colored piece for this one, then you would want a three and three quarter inch by five piece that's white to go on the inside of the card. Does that make sense? And if you're looking at my measurements, I have no idea what wall means or why that's there. <laughs> so just disregard that. Um, okay, I think we've got all the pieces. I am gonna click over on my computer and do a little um, sneak cheat to look at my directions um, and see what the, um, 
what the instruction on, on the paper was. All right, so um, da, da, da. we fold it in half to form a triangle and we're going to adhere it shut. That's right, where did that come from? Um, so let's go ahead and glue that. I'm just using some stamp and seal. Um, but of course, if you have a favorite adhesive, I didn't need to put it there because I just doubled up, whatever. Julie just put it together. <sighs> <laughs> don't overthink it all right so we've got our paper folded in half to form a triangle and we adhered it shut next we're going to score a half inch from the fold and just a quick thank you to mary ellen stites for introducing me to this fold this was a project that she shared at vacation stamping school and then i used her design for my class with the ornate garden um, and I know other people have done this fold, so it's not necessarily Mary Ellen's design, but Mary Ellen is the one who inspired me um, to create this design. So I have scored a half inch from the fold, so a half inch from the long end, um, and I just tried to make sure that I did that, you know, well, you don't want to tear through the paper, but you want to, um, you want to make sure that you are, are scoring well and getting through both layers. So I'm just gonna give that a quick, a quick fold to create this little flap. So I'm using the bone folder. So that kind of folds over, almost looks like a kerchief, doesn't it? Um, all right, this is going to stick on the back of the card base. And so I've got a gatefold card here. And sometimes with gatefold cards, you do two score lines, but honestly, I do think it's better if you start with one score line and then you take the other end and you meet in the middle. And sometimes it's you get funny creases here. And so what I like to do, I'm gonna take my cardstock, and you're not gonna totally be able to see this, but I'm gonna show you here with the block. I'm going to take the edge of my desk and I'm just gonna rub the cardstock against the edge of my desk. You could use a bone folder too, but I just feel like the edge of the desk is going to be easier. So I'm just gonna kind of rub it against the edge of the desk to sort of soften the fibers of the cardstock, which will make it which will make it easier to um, to fold it. So I'm just going to do that. I know it's off camera. Um, you kind of get a little curl there, but it's going to come out no problem. But I just, I want to make it easier to fold over without creating a funny crease. Once I match it up in the middle, then I can even out with the bone folder and get a crease to create my gatefold card. And you, like it still has a little bend, but you just bend it right back and it's fine. So we got our gatefold card here, like that. I feel like you can really see all the bumps and wrinkles in it. Um, gatefold card, meet in the middle. And so our um, designer paper is going to stick to the back of this. So like it opens here and then it opens here. Okay, and, um, and so we're going to glue this on and I really wanna use something thick because we got a lot of cardstock layers going on here. I'm gonna use some tear and tape and I'm going to put the tear and tape on to, um, actually just gonna put it right here on the card and right up against the edge. And then, yep, fold back like that. Okay, so I'm going to line up the peak of that fold. I feel like I need two hands. <laughs> I have two hands. <laughs> I need four hands. Okay, the peak right there in the fold, and then I'm gonna fold this over. And I got the middle down, so now I can like turn it around and really just make sure it's on there good. Okay. Are you following so far? I hope I haven't lost you. It's a pretty easy card once you like break break it down and get the measurements and things. All right, I'm gonna click back over to the chat so I can see where we're at here. Fabulous, wonderful. Oh, thank you so much for the reminder. Um, Sandy, if you are enjoying uh, Thursday Night Stamp Therapy, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It helps me out so much helps the channel out and helps me grow um, so more people can find us. So all I did there was I just trimmed off the edges that were hanging over the edge. So now I've got this sort of envelope flap. Now you see how it gets its name, the envelope flap card, um, because it looks like an envelope flap. Um, so I'm gonna discard these pieces here. 
I'm going to bring it in the other pieces of our card stock or our card. And so we've got our little blue panels. These are going to go onto the front of that gatefold. So let's go ahead and adhere those down. And I do think, like, I love that hot air balloon paper, but I think that it kind of would just be swallowed up um, by the stripes because they're so big and overwhelming. So I do think more of a solid color pattern is a good choice for um, for our card today. Yeah, definitely. This whole thing now is going to go on to the blue cardstock. And so it just kind of frames everything out. It's actually like, I'm surprised how much it frames everything out. I feel like it is not the right size. Let's see, is this one not any different? Huh, interesting. Well, I like things to be evenly spaced and I'm not sure which is off a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adhere it all the way to the top so that I have more of an even border around the three edges. Um, if you wanted to, you can center it, but then it's almost a non-existent border at the top and the bottom. So I'm just gonna do it at the top and then I'll still have a nice border around the edges and I think that's lovely. Because I've got so many layers of cardstock, I am going to use some of the tear and tape to adhere the um, gatefold card onto the card base. I really want to make sure this card does not pop off the base. And so I'm going to go all the way around with it, which I know feels like overkill. But if you ever had a card fall apart, it's worth it. Yeah, kind of different to have it right all, all the top. Sometimes uh, there are happy mistakes and um, I love it when that happens. <laughs> all right, let's just fold over. Oh, it already did that to itself, perfect. Okay, so Azure Afternoon, that's the color blue um, of our card base and the designer paper, that darker blue is the Azure Afternoon. It's really pretty, isn't it? Um, it's one of the newer colors that were just added um, in the spring during our last uh, mini catalog, or the last annual catalog. We had a color changeover, and so those core colors um, changed it up a little bit. All right, so we got our envelope fold card, and that is sort of the gist of it. Now, if you had a colored card base instead of the white, you could put your white piece in here um, just to layer it out. And if you wanted to, you could add even more layers to your card, and you could do another layer of blue and another layer of white on top of it. But I think we got a lot going on already, and we haven't even embellished this card yet. Um, so those are the measurements, and I'll put them in the video description for you so that you can follow along and make one at home if you'd like. But now it's time to embellish our card. And so we've got this hot air balloon stamp set and some great colors here um, to work with. So I think we're going to do um, a hot air balloon here. I think that would be just lovely. Maybe some of these die cut um, clouds. I think that um, I like that idea a lot. So I'm thinking a hot air balloon here that can tuck. Maybe that might be too big. I'm not sure. We're going to have to figure that out. Maybe two hot air balloons. Um, Maybe, hmm, do we want to do a label across um, across here or just the hot air balloons? Good question. And the original card, I had um, an element that um, tucked underneath with the flap. And so I was thinking we could do the um, up, up, and away, hooray, it's your birthday. We could have a circle here that kind of tucks into that within the hot air balloon or two and some clouds. You know what I think though? Let's take a look at some inspiration. I'm going to show you some of my card samples using the hot air balloon stamp set bundle and this lighter than air designer paper and maybe we'll be inspired as we look at these samples. Um, I've had so much fun um, with this suite. In fact, I will be featuring this lighter than air suite in my uh, March bonus project kit. So if you order $40 or more in the month of March, you're going to get a special designed kit 
I don't know what it looks like because I haven't designed it. <laughs> uh, but you'll get a sampling of the lighter than air designer paper and some fun embellishments to go with it that are um, perfectly colored and match really nicely. Um, so watch for watch for details about that. I always share those bonus projects at the end of the month like usually the last Thursday. Um, so I will be unveiling officially the kit then, but you can order, not you can order, you can order now to earn the kit for free, lighter than air. So just a heads up, this is the featured suite for March. So let's check out some of these projects. And some of these you may have seen before in other videos. Here's one where I use the designer paper as the focal point. I just love these colors together, balmy blue with the azure afternoon and lemon lolly. Isn't that lemon lolly just the best? I feel like we need some kind of lemon lolly over here, either for the greeting or maybe to do with the hot air balloon. Here's another card where I made, um, I. Uh, paired that lemon lolly with the fresh freesia and this is the circle I'm thinking about using the one and three quarter inch circle um, to do the greeting so that could work maybe with a little bit of the twine from that suite too that's a good idea these were die cut not die cut fussy cut from the designer paper this this piece right here actually the one that we didn't end up using um, and layered here's one where I did a fun card oh this was part of the 12 days of Christmas do you remember that video I'll try to link it up for you in the video description uh, it's an easy center step card and I stamped in the background and then stamped and die cut the pieces here. Azure Afternoon Calypso Coral with the Lemon Lolly. I love the way that one turned out. Um, all right, and then we've got another card. This is a swap card from Barb Mulliken. She used the, um, oh, those dies. I have them out because I was thinking about using them. Um, everyday detail dies. See, I've got them right there, the circles with the dots. I just love those. Um, really pretty card here. Similar colors, balmy blue with uh, flirty flamingo and the lemon lolly. I don't know why I keep bringing in the Calypso Coral. Maybe they're both in there, Calypso Coral and lemon, or flirty flamingo. Yeah, I, I think they are. Uh, this is a card I made during Sunday Stamping, and if you haven't seen this one, you guys, you're going to want to. <laughs> I'll put it in the video description for you. Uh, when you pull on the bottom flap, it brings a little pop-up card. Ah, I just think that is so much fun. Up, up, and away. Hooray, it's your birthday. That fun little label die is part of the bundle um, as well. This is such a great card. If you haven't seen it yet, you should definitely check it out. I'll add that link in the video description. Um, here's one I cased from the catalog. I kind of put my own spin on it, but balmy blue lemon lolly, um, stamping those big hot air balloons in the background, sort of like their shadows. And then the focal image on top in both colors, the lemon lolly, um, cardstock for the sentiment hanging there. Um, here's one where I used bubble bath with fresh freesia and a little pop of calypso coral in there. And I, I swear that is calypso coral, but I'm really double really second guessing myself because the twine is flirty flamingo i think both colors are in there i'm looking at here that's flirty flamingo that's calypso coral i'm gonna go with both colors <laughs> all right so speaking of colors we got we got those colors here in our stripes and so we need to decide what colors we want to stamp our balloons do you did you guys Feel some inspiration from these sample cards. Tell me what colors you would like to see. I think some Azure Afternoon is appropriate because that's the color of our card base. Um, and I don't know, I'm thinking maybe we should stamp two balloons, a large one and a small one, and then die cut some clouds and also then um, do our circle sentiment. I think that is... I think that's good. All right, so I'm seeing Sandy says fresh freesia. Love it. I love the blues and the purples together. That's going to be a great color combination. Um, but we need a couple cards. So we got fresh freesia. We'll do Azure Afternoon. And then what do we think? Like lemon lolly? Yeah, Terry says lemon lolly. I like that idea. Um, and maybe just, the th I don't know, do we need to bring a fourth color? A fourth color in there. Um, I love that this paper has so many colors. There are so many options. Um, but maybe we just kind of do some different combinations with those. I think that's good. Fresh freesia, lemon lolly. Okay, 
Um, so for the front, we're going to say, um, up, up and away, hooray, it's your birthday. And then on the inside, do you know what I love? I'm going to do this. Uh, I think it was on this card. I really love the way this turned out on the inside. I did a circle of designer paper and then that banner. I think that's so fun. I want to do the same thing inside this card since we've got the white going on. I want to do a circle like that and a banner. So let's do that uh, same kind of concept, except the banner inside will say wish big. I think what's the other one? Yeah, wish big. Okay, um, we need both baskets. Let's get those out. And then for the... Um, Oh, you know what I haven't used? I haven't used any of these. Let's use a detailed die on the um, on the middle of the larger hot air balloon. I think that is going to be a wonderful way to work in um, the bundle. Oh, do you guys love this sweet? Is it just me? I really am drawn to this one. Um, and every time I ask, I feel like I get such a lukewarm response. But maybe you're warming up to lighter than air, the hot air balloons. Um, we have had hot air balloons stuff before. So maybe it's just done and you guys already have the hot air balloons. Uh, tell me what you think. Yay or nay on this sweet. Are you liking it or you just feel like mm, it's not for you? Which it's okay if it's not. Because my point always when I share cards with you um, is to inspire you you to use what you have at home and make the same cards that I'm doing. So even if you don't like it, I hope that you're inspired and you try this fun fold or you try this color combination um, when you are stamping. Um, Jimmy, when you have a second, can you fill my water cup? I have it in here. Um, all right, I've got a little scrap. We're gonna use that for um, stamping. Thank you, sweetheart. Oh, sorry. There's, <laughs> there's hardly any room to walk in. Um, Dropping. All right. I'm getting our colors out. I got some Azure Afternoon. I did grab some Balmy Blue just in case. Um, and then Fresh Freesia and Lemon Lolly. I think those colors are fantastic. Um, so let's do, let's do, let's do. Hmm. Mm mm. Um, let's do, thank you. Um, I can't decide. Should the large balloon be Azure Afternoon or Fresh Freesia? This or that, Azure or Fresh Freesia. And I'm definitely feeling like some lemon lolly for the smaller balloon. Or maybe the balmy blue. Jennifer and Fonda say this. Susan says this, the Azure Afternoon. Um, and then the other one, lemon lolly. Just thinking through this. Okay. Um, let's try Azure Afternoon. That's fun. And then, um, you know, honestly, though, I'm thinking, should it be? Nope. I'm, what color for the basket? What color for the basket? Um, over here, we're going to do some fresh freesia and some lemon lolly. Are we freezing? Hmm. I'm not sure why it's freezing. Hopefully it's only momentary. Oh, pecan pie. Okay. I was kind of feeling like we should do something from the papers, but pecan pie is a natural color for the basket. So um, that works. What do you guys think? That yellow is so bright. <laughs> um... I'm not sure why I'm getting some freezing bits on my end. Okay, pecan pie, and then I want to do a die cut here, and I'm kind of thinking um, a die cut with the, um, this, oh, what is this treasure trove of goodies? <laughs> I didn't realize I had some things that are pre-cut. This is awesome. Okay. Um, 
I like it. I like it. Let's go. Let's do that on the inside. We already got that done. Woohoo! <laughs> um, I think this is supposed to go on the large one, isn't it? Oh, no, it's for the, maybe that one? I think it is for the smaller one. We don't necessarily have to use it, but just some, some, look, oh my gosh, that is exactly what we're doing right here, and it's already die cut. Hey, perfect, I'll just use that. <laughs> um, I, I love this, it's like finding money in your coat pocket. <laughs> Do you guys keep your extra die cut pieces? um in your in your dies that's fun okay um so we need to die cut um some clouds and we need to die cut some baskets and i want to die cut this detailed piece um to go in the center here oh ooh, i was gonna do the balmy blue but now i'm wondering if like if some um Lemon Lolly wouldn't be pretty. I don't know. I, I think the, the balmy blue kind of ties in with this. So, hmm, tell me what you think. Detailed dye in balmy blue or lemon lolly? Leave a comment, let me know. Um, alternatively, we could do it in white with a balmy blue solid underneath. Oh, I kind of like that. White over balmy blue. Do you understand what I'm, I'm saying there? That could be really pretty. Oh, I like that a lot. Okay. <laughs> um, and we're gonna need these dies as well. So many detailed dies here that you can use. Um, and some to layer over, like, so this would be the solid piece that you could layer this one over, um, and then, like, detailed to layer on solid ones and, um, these pieces here. So, so fantastic. Let's get out that pecan pie. Pecan pie is in the neutrals. It's also another one of the new colors, um, that we just came out with. And it's such a great little medium blue. I really like that one. Um, all right, this card's just going to take us the whole time, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm okay with just taking my time, and I hope that you are too. This just feels like a, a fun card to lift, lift our spirits tonight. Okay, we need the large die here. I'm going to get out Lucy. She's so great at handling these little these little jobs. And that one right there. I like to use the, um, the sticky notes to hold down. Um, I gotta get some of that removable tape. Mom's talking about it all the time and I know you guys have mentioned it too. Um, but this is what's handy, so I'm just gonna use what I have. <laughs> I know I already die cut one, but since I stamped it, I might as well die cut again, right? Amazon, thank you, Susan. I'm just gonna have to look it up. <laughs> um, okay. This is gonna all be in white, and then that one we talked about, balmy blue. So let's get a little scrap. Just reaching down into my scrap bucket. There we go, that's perfect. Let's get Lucy out. Let's have her help us get this job done tonight. Isn't she just the cutest? We just love Lucy. <laughs> We're gonna go a couple passes with our little mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. Sorry for the um, the shaking of the table. My camera is on a like a tripod, and so <laughs> sometimes we um, we shake when we do this. I, I I was talking to somebody once, and they're like, "Oh, it drives me crazy to see people's desks shaking." And um, I guess the alternative to that is like mounting my camera so that it's above the desk. 
I don't know. That just seems really fancy. I'm pretty, uh, I'm a pretty simple, <laughs> I have a pretty simple setup to share with you. And, um, that is sort of more my speed. So I'm sorry the table shakes every now and then. <laughs> um, I hope that you will forgive me. All right, let's do some. Oh, look at that. So pretty. Oh my God, so detailed. I should have used some adhesive paper to stick that down. It would have been a little easier, but that's okay. Get Lucy tucked out of the way. And I need our, our little dye bowl. This is a magnetic dye bowl so that I don't lose my dyes. And then I'll put them away afterwards. Especially those little baskets. Ooh Remember that time I lost my bow tie? <laughs> A tiny little bow tie die, and um, I never did find it. It was gone forever. There's the little basket over here. Okay. Such a good idea. Get those scraps out of the way. Make sure your dies are all accounted for when you're throwing away your scraps. So nothing gets loose. Nothing gets out. Okay, we'll just move that out of the way and um, bring some of these in. So we're gonna use some liquid glue here. Um, oh, good luck, Deb, getting your swaps done for on stage. I haven't, I mean, I've thought about it. I haven't made any progress whatsoever. So for me, it's gonna be a last minute thing. But I'm going down a couple days early to spend some time in Galveston. So maybe I will bring something with me and work on it while we have a little downtime. I have been known to bring swaps to, on the airplane <laughs> to be finishing up. So that might happen this time as well. Um, and if it doesn't get done, it doesn't get done. That is, um... oh, Sherry, that's a great question. I don't think I do have a YouTube video tour of my stamp room. Um, you would be shocked at how simple it is. <laughs> Um, I need to clean it. It's on my list of things to do. I need to clean up so that I can show you because I don't think that in its current state, it would be very fun to see. <laughs> I know you guys would disagree, but, um, this is really pretty. So I layered that on there and then I'm going to layer it on here. Um, and it's not much of a contrast between the balmy blue and the azure afternoon, but I think it's nice to have a little bit of that lighter blue. It doesn't have to be a loud, a loud change or difference there. So, um, YouTube video tour coming soon. <laughs> I won't promise when, but <laughs> it is on my list. That's really pretty. I think this is going to be lovely on our cards. I like that a lot. And our other other balloon there. I'm kind of wondering if it's too many stripes going on. Maybe I should do, maybe I should use um, this to do a, like a solid color balloon. Um, Hmm, I'm kind of wondering if that might be smart to do a fresh freesia balloon, solid fresh freesia. Hmm, thoughts? What do you guys think? The stripes and the stripes just feels like it might be too much. Let's cut one. Let's take a look. Oh, that's a good idea. I'll put the striped one on the inside. I like that. All right, so we are going to do a solid balloon and fresh freesia. And we are going to do, that is really tiny. Um, 
a solid balloon and fresh free no, a solid balloon and fresh freesia and a solid basket in the um pecan pie that's what I was trying to say gluing those tiny little sides <laughs> tiny 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 little sides to the basket and the balloon there and let's get those little pieces out for our, our die cut I feel like this is going to be the longest video for one card but it just feels so good to take my time thank you for your patience tonight if I'm going too slow I'm sorry <laughs> Sometimes it's nice just to relax and not rush. You guys probably take your time at home, right? I do need Marie Kondo. The, the problem is I just have so much stuff like in progress. Like my floor has um, packages that need to go out <laughs> and um, boxes of cards that I need to take pictures of. And, um, I feel like my shelves are pretty organized. It's just the piles of stuff on my floor. <laughs> um, oh, I'm so glad you guys are crafting. So that's a good question. When you are watching, are you just watching? Or are you multitasking? Um, are you watching another program or another video? <laughs> are you um, are you stamping at home? Maybe something different than working in your in your stamp room. Are you, um, to put me on to fall asleep at night? It's okay. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't turn on YouTube to fall asleep at night, but I do, um, turn the TV on and it's really more just like a, a distraction because I always fall asleep right away, but, um, I just sometimes need a sound to distract my brain from thoughts that keep me up all night. <laughs> Oh, let's layer these detailed die cuts together. That glue is going to dry clear, so I'm not too worried about it. And a little glue at the top. That's too much. I'm going to try to spread it. Oh. And I'm using these tiny little things at the top of the basket as sort of my guide for where to place it because I'll bring those to the bottom of the balloon and then go across and that looks about right I think hmm. I wondered if the um oh, you know what I kind of want to emboss this Wah! is it too late be quick be quick be quick <laughs> I kind of want to give that a little texture. What do you think? Um, I think because it's solid, it'll be okay um, against there. But I, I do want to add a little texture. Let's see. Um, I have a bag of embossing folders. Here it is. It's like a little canvas bag. I think I got it on a Stampin' Up! incentive trip, but I put all my embossing folders in there. I just love this one, this little crosshatch. It's one of the three that are part of the 3D Basics embossing folder pack and online exclusive. Um, I think that's still available. It's kind of a staple, I feel like. Um, and the other ones that come in it are the big, um, the big polka dots, and then there's like a florally star this one those are the three but I like the cross hatch it's just like a little like it's kind of subtle but it's just just right so I am going to just lean over and do this on the floor so I don't have to put my big machine on the um on the table but this is a 3d embossing folder so it's going to go with the platform and then the embossing folder and then my great uh my gray um embossing plate which is over here so platform one embossing folder and the gray embossing plate oh, all right let's see here <laughs> um K3 
of five Ks. Julie, you must be a night person. I would be comatose. You know, I used to be more of a night person and the older I get, the less of a night person I am <laughs> because my body doesn't, um, it wakes up at the same time every day and it doesn't matter what time I go to bed. So like seven o'clock is my magic wake up hour. And so if I go to bed at one, I'm still waking up at seven. <laughs> <laughs> so it's rough to be a night owl these days because um, it's just, it just doesn't work for me. I like that little added texture. Um, oh, that's really pretty. Oh, then I'm wondering if this should be white instead of yellow. <laughs> Why do I do this to myself? <laughs> um... Oh, you guys, am I crazy? Should I change it to white? Because I think I want to do a yellow greeting. Um, lemon lolly. And you guys like the yellow? You think it's good? <laughs> um, all right, all right. I'll leave it. I'll leave it to just be the lemon lolly. Are you sure? Okay, Cindy, are you saying yes to the white or yes to leave it? Because... <laughs> Um, we're, we're going to put our clouds on. I'm going to use some Stampin' Dimensionals for the clouds. We're going to have our, um, we're going to have our balloons. Is one balloon enough? Maybe I don't even need the other one. <laughs> After all that. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know. Tell me what you think about one. Um, I sort of, I sort of like one and I hate that I like just one <sighs> because we we did all that <laughs> all that work <laughs> uh, um okay let's stamp our greeting let's get the greeting on there and um we're doing on the front we're going to do up up and away hooray it's your birthday Yes, I'm using Azure Afternoon ink. And for the inside, wish big on the banner that we already had die cut, but it did come from the same die set, the hotter balloon. Um, yes, I can put the second balloon inside, absolutely. Um, speaking of the inside, let's go ahead and put our sentiment inside and we'll see what we think about um, what we wanna do inside okay I like the stripes it just like ties it in it's really pretty okay wish big oh oh <laughs> I love this what do you think about um what do you think about that two on the inside i mean i suppose gosh we could do three <laughs> um the other thing you could do in here is a little bit of the designer paper oh i like that too What do you think? Designer paper or die cut balloons? This or that? Balloons or paper? <laughs> or both? Are you saying <laughs> do do the the die cut on one side and the paper on the other? Mary says skip the DSP. <laughs> Susan, flip a coin. <laughs> I should have a coin on my table just for these instances. <laughs> um, 
I, I think one or the other. And I'm, I'm seeing a lot of this and using the die cut. So let's do, um, I don't know. You guys do like that. Um, I feel like because these are like more three, three D or paper or live, like you doing the DSP on this side just feels like it's like a cop out. Let's just stick with the balloons. Yeah, that's good. All right. So I'm just going to use, because this is the inside, I'm just going to use regular adhesive to glue these down because I don't want to add any bulk with Stampin' Dimensionals. Um, so regular adhesive to stick these down. And we're going to have the stamped one be on the bottom. What a journey this card has been, ironically, because it's balloons. <laughs> oh, that is lovely on the inside, I do think. Um, okay, and then for the front, we're going to have our circle down here, and we're going to strategically place the um, dimensionals so that the circle will... Um, Kind of hold that um, the flap closed, if that's making sense, and um, and so like you can open the flap and then open, and so this sort of tucks underneath there. Okay, so we're gonna have that on one side, and then we're going to add I think just one balloon. And then we've got our clouds. And so the clouds are going to go down with just regular adhesive and then the big balloon on with Stampin' Dimensionals. Oh, what a lovely card. And I am recording, yes. <laughs> so that's okay. <laughs> I had a moment where I wasn't talking. All right, right there in the center. Oh, I love the way this card turned out. I know, right? Whoever receives this card better appreciate it. <laughs> How many of you don't send your cards because you feel like nobody's worthy of the amount of time you spent on it? Oh my gosh. Sometimes I do feel like I need to very carefully choose who I'm sending the card to because not everybody appreciates all the hard work that goes into making a card. In today's instance, how long have we been at this? An hour? Um, I I want to add another, I want to add another um, cloud. Do you feel like it needs one more? And then um, like over here. Right? Yeah. Let's do one really quick. And then um, I was thinking too, um, maybe a couple of those fun little dots. Oh, oh, some twine. Yes, where's the twine? Oh, so pretty. And Lucy, come back here real quick, Lucy. <laughs> um, so I have, I, I should, I should send this to someone who's watching. What do you think? Um, <laughs> the problem is I don't want to send it right away. I want to keep it and I want to look at it and then I'll send it in a little while when I'm done looking at it. <laughs> so if I sent it to somebody, it wouldn't be until like, you know, April. <laughs> um, oh, Susan, you've made cards where your grandkids promptly tear them up. I know, right? Oh, it's so sad that they um, they don't always appreciate it. Like, they love it. They love the way it looks, especially like Valentine's and stuff, right? They're just digging. They just want the candy. <laughs> um, or Halloween, Halloween treats. Um, okay. I die cut both because I wasn't sure which one I would want to use. And... Um, I just felt like it needed a third balloon, right? Now I'm like second guessing where to put it though. Oh, oh, the problems. And 
decision. I think peeking out. That's good. Um, we definitely, I think, need a little twine. And I am thinking, oh gosh, I don't know. I was thinking bringing in the yellow, but maybe, maybe that pink would be pretty. To tie in a little bit of the pink. Thoughts? What do you think? Pink, yellow? Let's, let's cut a bow and take a look and then we can also bring in the um, enamel dots. I don't have pink anywhere else but maybe that is a great way to incorporate the pink because I don't have it anywhere else. Okay, one last vote for the evening. <laughs> um, okay, there's the pink, which I think is flirty flamingo. Terry's saying sweet sorbet, but I think it's I think it's flirty flamingo, or the yellow lemon lolly. Ooh, I think I like the pink. I think the contrast is nice. Um, and definitely, let's get some gemstones out and let's see what colors we have to bring in. Um, for that. Oh, this card is turning out so good. I'm so happy. Let's see. The gems that come in this suite are these, the rainbow adhesive backed dots. They're so pretty. They come in lots of colors, including Fresh Freesia, Lost Lagoon, Bubble Bath, Azure Afternoon, Lemon Lolly. <laughs> what color is that orange? What is that supposed to be? I'm, I'm drawing a blank here. Petal pink? I think it's supposed to be petal pink. Pool party and um, that really is a tricky color. I think it's flirty flamingo. Um, oh, so, hmm. Oh, I didn't mean to make that pop off. One last decision, guys. I can get through this. <laughs> oh, um, I'm drawing a blank. If I do some lemon lolly, it kind of pulls in the lemon lolly that I already got going on over there. And I kind of like that parallel with the circles. Yeah, Sandy says pink bow, yellow dots. I think that is the magic combination. Of course, when you are making your card at home, you can use whatever color dots you want, whatever color bow you want whatever stamps that you want. Um, this is such a fun card design. And if you want to see some more examples, go over to the Facebook page, Julie's Stamping Spot Share and Connect group. Like I said, Alita has shared some of the, um, some of the envelope flap cards that she has made over there. Really beautiful samples. Thank you so much, Alita, for sharing um, in the group there. And um, we're gonna stick this last part on, this little bow with a glue dot. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of roll it a little bit underneath the dot. Oh, 
could have made all kinds of a mess with this. But I got it on. Oh, envelope flap card. Check the measurements in the video description. When I'm all done, I'll add them in there. The Lighter Than Air Suite. Um, this is just such a fun, such a fun, such a fun card, such a fun suite. Thank you guys so much for helping me tonight, helping me make choices, choosing the paper, choosing the images, choosing the colors. <laughs> I think we did a great job on this card. And I really love the way that it turned out. I hope that you do too. Thank you so, so much for stamping with me tonight. I know that it seems like we should have made a whole lot more, but we just did one card tonight. But gosh, it, it was a beauty of a card. And I'm so glad that you <laughs> were here to stamp with me. I hope you enjoyed tonight's video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And again, if you love this Lighter Than Air Suite, make sure you get an order in with me this month in February. When you order $40 or more from my online store, you'll get a free project kit featuring the Lighter Than Air Suite. This is the featured suite for March. Um, if you ordered in February, I'm working on getting your kits in the mail before I go to Unstage. So watch your mailbox. They are ready to go, the Nature's Sweetness Kits. Um, thank you guys so much for being here tonight. And for being part of my stamping community, <laughs> all your comments mean the world to me. And I'm so glad that you're, that you're here. So I hope that you have a fabulous night. Tune in on Sunday, March 10th for Sunday Stamping with Susan and Julie featuring the Simply Zinnia Suite this week. So excited about those projects. Um, and I won't be here, but I'll have a video ready for you um, on Tuesday. Uh, the great big card top. I'll get that pre-filmed for you and fingers crossed I will have a Thursday night stamp therapy video um, going live pre-recorded for you next Thursday. Um, if I have to cancel though, I'll let you know. It's just because I ran out of time before on stage. So um, thank you so much for joining me. Have a great week and I will see you again very soon um for another paper crafting video and Fonda to answer your question at the very end yes mom is going to on stage two she's going to be there in fact dad and mom um and Jim and I will have some extra time in Galveston together and some extra time in Houston afterwards together so I think it's going to be a lovely trip so looking forward to spending time with them Yes, truly therapy tonight, Sharon. Thank you guys all for helping me um, process and work through this creative therapy. Have a great night. See you soon. Bye.